just a little bit of a recap in case any of my other footage didn't work out. Um, I'm talking about um, adding a zipper to uh, my existing binder pattern. So what I've done is I've printed out um, I've printed out my binder pattern. This is just the front underlay, but you would print out your front underlay, well, you would print out your whole pattern. Print out your front underlay, your um, front overlay, and your mesh, your stable layer. And those fronts, you're going to extend, a, mark your center line, and extend a half an inch out to the other side. And then um, cut that other side off. And then I went at um, 90 degrees to my center line, just at the top of the V, or the bottom of the V. That gives us the, the seam allowance to add a zipper. And then what we're gonna do is each of those um, front pieces, you're gonna cut one each side rather than just a single or two the same, one each side, absolutely. Okay, so that's what I have here, the pattern. And then I've sewn my binder with the two front halves that are extended here. And then I'm just going to show you the other pieces that I've prepared. So I have a zipper. Um, this is a nylon zipper in a number three. And it the shortest I could find a nylon separating zipper in a number three was um, 14 inches. So I did have to shorten it. There are tons of videos on YouTube about how to shorten zippers. If you need one, definitely let me know. I have three um, bra strap um, hooks. So these will be to support the zipper. A, a zipper where it's under stress is going to give out eventually, and especially at the top and the bottom of the zipper, but there's also where the stable layer begins will be a point of stress. So I wanted to give this binder the opportunity to survive that stress. So I have three bra strap clips with a little bit of um, bra strap sewn onto it. And then I have three loops of bra strap just to, um, to hook those into. And this is just from an old bra. Um, you can probably buy this hardware, but I didn't look. I, we don't have any um, fabric stores in town, so I just did this. Um, and then I also have just an interfaced piece of the jersey. This is, looks like two and a quarter inches. Well, it's, it's a two inch wide interfacing, so. Um, to use to back those clips so that the clips aren't digging into your um, rib cage. All right, so I haven't done this before. We're just gonna sew it and try it and see how it goes. For a zipper insertion, I like to use these clips. These ones here. Um, I don't know what you can see where those clips. My favorite zipper foot is this one. It is a split zipper foot and I like that because I get just the right distance from the zipper teeth. I'm never closer than I should be so my zipper is never jamming um, and it just keeps the distance really nicely. It's my favorite. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to um, clip the zipper on to both sides of my binder. So um, the, bind, the binder's all pinned. Um, what I've done is folded the tape um, 45 degrees 
across the top of the zipper and then folded that angle down um, to, towards the underside of the binder. And I'm going to stitch, um, I'm gonna stitch on top of the tape and then all those knit fabrics hopefully are going to be pulled along by the feed dogs. So we're not using any interfacing, we're just using the tape as the interfacing. So fingers crossed that it works. I'll just set up my machine. you hold your tails and I just like to put that needle through the fabric as a sort of an extra clamping measure and then I'm going to try to stitch back and forth just at the top. Okay, if your machine doesn't want to backstitch, you can always drop your needle. Turn your work all the way around and just stitch up to the top and, that, and then you drop your needle and turn back. aren't pulling my jersey along quite as fast as um, as it wants to walk along the zipper tape. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing down on either side of the zipper with um, my fingers just to make sure that that um, jersey, all those layers get pulled along at a consistent rate so we don't have tension. I don't want to pretend that this won't be an incredibly frustrating task. Um, this is really difficult and whoever tries it, like you're very brave and hold your mouth right and just be determined to give it one more try. I was able to backstitch at the hem, just not at the very top of the zipper. At least not nicely. So we'll just look at that. That looks beautiful. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Um, I'm going to prioritize sti stitching from the top down. No, am I? Yes, I would like to stitch with the tape side up and I would like to stitch from the top down. So I'm going to move my piece to the other side of my machine. It's just gonna be tricky starting at the top of this zipper. Um, it's gonna be trickier to end there than it is to stop there, I think. So to start there, I am not making sense. I did have coffee. Okay, I think, I think this is the best plan. And we'll try back stitching again. No, it wasn't too bad. The back stitching works there. So I'm just pressing all layers down to the deck. is attached to both fronts. And we just want to double check that everything is meeting up nicely. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah. I was going to say a self-shortened zipper is never going to look perfect to you because it's your responsibility. But I think that's not terrible. 
So I'm going to start by adding the clips. I think to this side. Okay, something that I didn't think about was the like the distance of the clip is like the same as my zipper tape, so there's no way to just attach this clip to the zipper tape. Um, so maybe I will stitch the zipper down and we'll add the clips after. So what I'm gonna do is flip this way and I'm just going to stitch along the very edge of the tape with the front of the binder down. But first I'm just gonna trim a little bit of the jersey so that we can encase the edge of the binder completely under the zipper tape. My next binder tutorial will have to be in hot pink so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. So that's the edge trimmed, and then if we just flip it like this, you can see that you don't see the edge anymore. So I'm just gonna pop that under my sewing machine, under my presser foot. And I'm just going to um, keep track of all my layers with my fingers, but you could pin it or clip it if you felt like that was tricky. So I'm making sure that I pull the front of the binder away from the zipper teeth, and I'm also holding all layers down to the deck, and then I'm just stitching along the very edge of the tape. Since everything is dark <laughs> and I'm using a zipper foot, it's not having amazing control. So I'm just going to switch feet. So I'm going back to my regular foot. Hmm, okay. I'm hearing a noise that makes me think that I should change my needle. There's just a catch. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but there's just a noise as the uh, needle is going through the zipper tape that makes me think that I have a barb on the end of my needle. So when I'm done this seam, I'm going to do that. favorite needle size is 90 over 14 for most things in a shirt and I like 80 over 12 for jersey knit in the ballpoint. But I do keep a good stock of all sizes. So I'm just going to do the reverse. I'm going to stitch bottom up again with the tape up. And I'm pulling the front of the binder away from the zipper tape and also holding all layers down to the deck. Okay, so there is our zipper added. And if you are using something that's fairly light compression, um, like sized up our binder pattern. I think it would be fine to stop there and just do an experiment and see how it goes for you. But I think 
Um, if you want any kind of longevity from this zipper, you're going to have to support it. And if you're sensitive to synthetics, you'll need to put a placket in there to protect you from the zipper. So I'm going to keep going. And I think we're just going to put a clip in at the top of the zipper. And I'm just making this clip um, meet, meet the, um, I have a brain. <laughs> I'm making this clip meet the center of the zipper tape. And I'm just going to clip it on from the zipper side and then I'll stitch it from the other side while it's still clipped on. I'm putting one clip at the base of the stable layer and one clip at the base of the zipper itself. So I'm just going to um, tack those on by backstitching. We'll see how that goes. trimming the threads and what I'm going to do is um, take off these clips and then stitch back stitch again just a little closer onto the zipper tape. And in order to do that I'm switching back to my zipper foot. So that's those clips attached to the um, tab side of the zipper. And now I'm just going to trim the ends of the bra strap. And then we are going to put the little um, loops of bra strap on the other side. So if you have to do something on two sides of a zipper, oh, the zipper is being a bit stubborn and I'm just worried <laughs> this isn't going to go well. Um, what you should do is mark it like with a disappearing chalk so that you can um, meet your two things together at the same point. So right here I have the tab that goes to the stable layer. And this isn't perfect because this is not where I'm going to be um, putting the uh, my little tabby bit, but it's still it's still good to give yourself a reference point on this side. Okay. So I'm going to, because this is bra strap and it's a little bit elastic, I'm going to put my loop so that it just um, comes up to the edge of my binder and not to the edge of the teeth. And we'll see how that goes. So just the edge of the jersey fabric. And that will be helpful for the zipper. Okay, so I'm going to stitch once over top of that original stitching and once over the zipper tape if possible. So 
So I'm just going to go and um, stitch these down a little bit closer to my zipper. And then I'm going to trim that bra strap off, just take those tabs off. Okay. So the idea is you would clip your, um, clip your binder together to itself before you zip. Hopefully that makes it easier to zip up your binder. You always want to make sure your zipper is fully seated. The separating zipper is the most vulnerable right here. So you always want to make sure that tab is always into the base correctly before you pull up. And I think this might be good because it is pulling it a little too close together, but once it's on the body, I think that's going to be um, perfect. Okay, so next I just want to protect our skin from these clips and from the zipper tape. So, um, I have this piece of fabric here, and I'm hoping just fold it in half, it's enough to work as a gusset and it might be a little bit might be a little bit less wide than ideal okay so basically we want this to be about the same length as the zipper so I'm just stitching it across um, both ends with it folded in half. And um, since I started this project like five days ago, I've changed my serger thread. So this is, I'm just going to go over to my serger and stitch, um, stitch this edge finished with the serger, but the thread color is going to be wrong. So one second. So I searched that edge and I'm going to pull the ends of my serge into the seam. Probably I should have cut this band out three inches instead of two. But I think I made the choice because I have a roll of interfacing that's two inches wide. I don't think it matters really. I just thought it would be easier to manage if it was interfaced. So I'm just going to clip this to, um, how are we going to line this up? I think I'm going to extend beyond the edge of my zipper by about three eighths of an inch. So the, the edge of my serge is going to be um, right next to my zipper tape. Um, if you look here, like this is the serger, this is the zipper tape and this is the serger edge. So I think that's how I'm going to line things up. And since it's not at the edge of the fabric, I'm going to use pins. So I'm going to pin at the top and the bottom and then just sort of distribute evenly from there. And this is all by feel. I'm sure if this wasn't the first time I had done it, I would have come up with a strategy for you. Um, but I'm thinking of this as a project we're working on together. So if you try it and you have questions or troubles, um, please let me know and we will work on that together. Okay. Now, if you're worried about what your binder looks like, 
you're going to want to stitch from the top, which means pulling out the pins from the bottom, which is awkward, but not impossible. I'm switching back. I think I'm switching back again to my zipper foot because I'm pretty close to the zipper, or maybe not. Because of the clips, I'm switching back to the zipper foot. Okay. So I'm just going to follow along where I stitched before and try to pull out pins um, before I get to them. And I was just going to say the most, most important thing is not to hit one of those clips, and I think I am hitting a clip. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just go along beside um, the line of stitching that I already have going. And we'll see how that goes. Ugh. I didn't realize how wide these clips are, but they are also sturdy. Like a, a traditional little hook and eye is just going to um, pop, I think. Okay, this is going okay. Hold all layers down to the deck. It is attaching my placket, and the placket is not under any stress, so it's not a huge deal that it be sturdily attached. To the tape. Okay, so the next part of that experiment is figuring out if it worked. Um, I realize I've made some choices here about um, zipper size. And I chose this because I was trying to balance um, keeping a low profile um, and strength and accessibility. And that is a tricky balance. So you may find that you would like a beefier zipper. I think a coil is a good choice because on curves and under strain, um, a coil does quite well. So you could go to a number five coil. Um, separating that'll be easier to find. A three is more like a baby jacket zipper. Um, this is just a starting point for us to figure this out. I realize it's a lot of work for you to figure it out. Um, this little tab is probably hard to grab. You could always, always add something, a little cord to it to make it easier to grab but I felt that an underarm zipper would be uncomfortable and possibly inaccessible. So I think a front zip is the way to go. And these clips, I, I just don't know how accessible they are, but they're to protect the zipper. Um, I don't know if I will make zippered binders for my customers because I don't know that I can do um, customer service on zipper maintenance. Um, I know there are companies making accessible binders um, and they are the experts. I just, this is an experiment for me. So we'll go try this on and <laughs> see how it goes. And um, if you do try one, let me know what you think. I mean, this isn't for me. so. I just don't know exactly what the priorities are and where we need to put the different emphasis. Anyways, so let's go try this on and um... Zipper went really well. It's well supported. It was easy to get um, the zipper up once I got all the hooks and the base properly seated.